I'm Shah and this is Tech Moments. Today's moment is dedicated to my review of the Redmi 9. By the way, before I begin, it would really help if you could subscribe, comment, like and share this video. Thank you. So, just a bit of intel on what happened. I went online and literally typed best budget smartphone right now. And of course I stumbled across this phone. So let's see if the Redmi 9 can live up to that title as it has a shockingly low price. After using this phone extensively, I've divided my findings into three categories and those are the display followed by the camera and that is then followed by the big battery on this phone. So beginning with that display, Xiaomi's Redmi 9 is a 6.5 inch FHD plus with a 19 by 5 aspect ratio. The screen has a resolution of 2340 by 1080p and an overall pixel per inch count of 395. The LCD panel on the Redmi is bright, colorful and offers great viewing angles in most areas of the screen, particularly when consuming media. The color temperature is also adjustable within settings via, via warm and cool options along with a default option available too. It's actually crazy that Xiaomi have included a FHD plus display in a smartphone that is so low in price such as the Redmi 9. Other display features include sunlight mode which is basically a similar concept to true tone found in iPhones or adaptive brightness which features in Samsung's. To be honest the fact that this phone even has this is once again refreshing to see in such a low price point. The Redmi 9 is starting to look like a feature packed phone at a relatively low price. Now moving on to specs, other specs include the quad camera. Now this has really impressed me. It's an improvement over the Redmi 8, but there's a five megapixel macro sensor also contained amongst those rear sensors, which is great to see. Now take a look at these samples I took using the Redmi 9's camera as I will run through the specs further on the camera itself and tell me your thoughts in the comments below as I go through them. I took this picture with the main sensor, a 13 megapixel f2.2 aperture lens, which I think performs the best out of all the camera lenses on this phone. As you can see, it has great vibrancy, great color accuracy, and impressive detail. This is with the 2x zoom, and you can see detail is lost and the edge detection is poor. Now for the 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor and you can see a bit of dwarfing towards the bottom portion of the photo but with a, another picture taken with this lens there is no problems at all. In fact the detail was quite surprising to me at this price point. With HDR on which is available on the Redmi 9 the pictures do improve in detail and I would say some form of vibrancy. However there is still a lack of dy dynamic range and you can see here with the low light the performance of the camera is not great. However, having said this, there is an AI feature built into the camera department on this phone which picks up if you are taking photos in low light which is quite neat once again for the price. I'm going to talk about the portrait mode on this phone. As you can see, there's not great detail and also the edge detection for the portrait mode itself is not great with the camera remote power button there totally almost being blurred out. So overall, the camera quality is excellent for the price point. So moving on to the recording capabilities, it's only 720 at 30 and 1080p at 30 frames per second. That is it. So I am going to show you some samples now. Let me know in the comments what you think of them. Now, this is 30 frames per second at 1080p with the rear camera. Let me know what you guys think of the speaker as well. Uh, just a general video of my cat. This is now 720p at 30 frames per second and you can see same, literally the same environment, same sort of scenario but the detail has gone down drastically and also the stabilization and uh, the autofocus is not great. Now before I give my final verdict on if I think this is the best budget phone under the £150 mark or the under Rp10,000 mark as this is a phone predominantly sold in India. I'm going to go through one more sample of the mono audio speaker. So here it goes. To say, having seen a recent video of the speed the iPhone 12 has in comparison to devices with previous chipsets, the A14 looks to day-to-day tasks at an impressive speed. I'm not exaggerating. So the battery, it's a 5,000 milliamp hour huge battery 
powering the Redmi 9, which is also supportive of Quick Charge 3.0 up to 18 watts. What's strange is that only a 10 watt charger is found inside the box. I show this in my unboxing video of the Redmi 9, so go and check that out after this video, of course. So this doesn't sit well with me as I feel Xiaomi should have given buyers the fully fledged 18 watt charger from the get go since this phone has that sort of capability at the end of the day. So my tests for charge times are backed by that 10 watt charger, hence the following results. The Redmi 9 takes about 38 minutes to reach 25%, 50 percent takes well over the hour mark and from zero to a fully charged 100 percent charge takes about three whole hours this is slow really slow even for this budget price point i was expecting a lot more i mean they specced out this phone to probably its limit in certain areas but this is one area they totally totally have been ridiculous to be honest to the consumer Having said that, the lasting time of the charge levels are much better and less underwhelming as the Redmi 9 can last over 13 hours even with medium to some heavy use. That for me in some ways makes up for the lackluster speeds when trying to charge the device up. So before wrapping this long review up, I'm going to just basically go through some mentionable things of this device, starting with the MediaTek Helio G80 processor powering this device and this CPU basically can get you to do most tasks effectively and efficiently and you won't really notice much lag unless you are doing more graphic intensive duties such as opening up apps which have a lot more graphics inside them now for gaming it's brilliant you know as you can see here you can play games with ease and i haven't done a review using this phone to play other games which perhaps have more intensive graphics but i am sure with the way this phone can perform tasks on a day-to-day -day basis it should be absolutely fine now to wrap up guys it's been a great pleasure to use this phone and knowing that i bought this phone for such a low price it has been even better so yes absolutely this is the best budget phone you can buy right now in my opinion under the 150 pound mark under the 10,000 rupee mark under the 120 dollar mark and that is it period so until next time until the next tech moment i'll see you guys in that next video